Odin gave his eye to acquire knowledge, but I would give far more. <laughs> Let's get into it. One, two, three. Well, hello and welcome to my Whiskey Den, your favorite public access whiskey review channel where craft whiskey is king. Mike, what do we usually tell our lovely, lovely, I want to say customers, but I guess they're just viewers. You're going to have to become, you're going to have to become customers. You're going to have to buy some shit from us soon. It's coming, folks. It's coming. <laughs> viewers and followers uh <laughs> don't forget to like and subscribe <laughs> comment down below hit that bell notification to find out when new episodes are coming out most every night is a live uh and mm. evening with series uh so please come and join us especially the lively chats on monday nights are a lot of fun as well but today we are talking about far north spirits we just had michael swanson on um up here in that corner he was on an evening with, and we talked about some of the other things that are all doing out at the distillery between finishing casks and different unique varietals they're trying. Like, this is a rye that, uh, what is it, uh, AC Hazlitt rye, which is the one they use the most of. But recently in their Seed Vault series, they planted one acre of 15 different types of rye and are creating rye from each of those subtypes to see what they want to venture forward with. So they're doing some pretty interesting stuff. And yes. the Rocknar Minnesota Rye Whiskey is finished in a cognac cask this time. It is 47% alcohol by volume. It is 80% AC Hazlitt, 10% heirloom corn, and 10% malted barley. And it is aged in a 15-gallon oak barrel. From a Minnesota cooperage, and then finished for about a month in the cognac casks. Hmm. Um, yeah, good. I'm done rambling. If we can let other people talk, we can start sniffing it and get into it now. Um, this where I changes from the for like when I when I first pour it and start smelling it, it is much different than if I if I come back to it. Like it, it's a it's a different. A different whiskey, both very, very interesting and wonderful in their own right. But right off the bat, man, I had it just, I was getting uh, cream frosting, uh, malt, vanilla cake batter, and almonds initially. Wow. Almonds. I'm getting a little anise and spearmint. Um, I, I do get the spearmint. I'm not picking up yeah. any of the anise, though. Spearmint? Sorry. I get wet grass right off the top. For me, it's got that wet grassy rye note to it. And then I get some of the grape must from the uh, kind of the cognac barrel starts to, to creep up. But yeah, yeah, the spearmint's there. And there's a little bit of a, um, I, with all the rock nor rise I've had, there's just a really intense lemon oil note to it. And I still get that on this. It, Dampened down a little bit, I think, by the cognac, but it's still there. Yeah, and I'll and I'll give you the the lemon oil, but not like the pledge. There's a difference between lemon oil and pledge for some yeah. people, yeah. cleaners out Furniture there. Furniture polish. Yeah, there's a distinctive <laughs> difference. But it's and sweet just, too. Yeah, yeah I, I was gonna say I'm getting yeah. a it really sweet, sweet carm, almost like hyper caramel, kind of on the nose, where it is super. It smells super sweet, but not. Uh, not Wilford Brimley sweet. <laughs> yeah, he, you don't get the diabetes from, from this. No. <laughs> yeah, you get to keep all your toes after you have a glass. <laughs> keep the big D to yourself, Wilford. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's then this this is I mean the the sweetness on the nose. We, we've had other ones that were that were in the category, but more sweet. But but they didn't let up on the sweetness at all. This is it's sweet, but it's not like offensive no. sweet. I think you hit it, Ben, when you said the kind of like a, a little musty note to it. Yeah. But maybe from the cognac, you I almost get it feel like it might have been, you know, aged more in a dunnage than it would be in a, in like a normal Rick house. I was going to say, the more, more, the more I get into it, the more the cognac cast starts to come out. 
and yeah. I'm getting some really deep grape notes. It feels it, it 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 really feels like the more the more you're inhaling, you're drawing more things up out of it. And yeah, you, and it, yeah, you do get you do get a lot more. It's it's odd. I mean, it's I think I think we talked about when we talked to them. It's it's uh, um, it's it's densely layered. Mm -hmm. it takes a lot to get the get the layers out. And they're yeah. not they're not overpowering layers. No, all, where some no. of you know some other things have these like just dense overpowering layers. These are nicely layered, uh, dense, but they're not just like crapping on your senses. Right. Um, when you're in the glass, where it's like, oh, that's this, and this, this, you're smelling those things, but you like, like butter or almost like an apple butter. Yes, I was literally about to say I'm almost getting a yeah. kind of an apple cider type note to it. Mm -hmm. Not not quite apple cider, but there, there's an apple note going in there with cooked apples. It's pear, cinnamon. Oh. Yeah, there's there's a lot of things going on here. And it's amazing. I mean, the nose on this, the rye portion of it for me, it's youthful. I mean, which this is, is what was there? It's right at about a two year. Oh, oh two years. About yeah. Range for most of the rock. Nars. But a two year old rye, aging a 15 gallon barrel and finished for one additional month. Yeah. Is that right? In yep. Cognac? Yeah. About, about a month. And about it, a month. This is absolutely that, amazing to have the, the layers and the depth to this for that, that short of aging time. I mean, right. And it's not a rye slap or an anise bomb like a, no, lot, of, like a no. lot of younger ones can be. It's just that young grassy rye that reminds me of like a, uh, a Ranger Creek, their 44 rye. It's got yeah. these really strong yeah. grassy notes, A notes to it that you think of with the young rye. Not the big spice part, but the grassiness to it. Mm -hmm. That's there, but there's all these other components to it that are just... yeah. Man, you could just spend hours on this nose. It feels like and keep that, finding stuff. That grassy hay note, it it, it's not, um, it's not so much the young grassy hay note that that I get on stuff, but it is like the best smells of a farm. Oh man, it's yeah. I don't want to say it's right before you start doing harvest. Yeah, if you've ever gone to the you know, go to the state fair and you go into where they where they're keeping the livestock, and there's fresh hay and the animals are clean <laughs> and, and the stalls are clean, you know, and yeah. it's just like oh yes, yeah, this, this is good here. I mean, yeah, and if you work with horses, maybe the, to me there's almost a hint of alfalfa in here. If you work with some yeah. alfalfa bales, yeah, I get that. With kind of you could go that route with the little bit of the earthy part that pulls through there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, because we it. sit there and nose this for like 40 minutes. <laughs> could, could you imagine this, the nose of this, as a scented candle? Oh, <laughs> that would just be comfy, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, just I be know. lighted yep. and curl up in a corner. Like, I don't yep. know if I'd even read the book, but I'd be like, ah, oh, it's nap time. It's that time. Yep. I don't know. I'm getting big caramel and a creamy caramel up front. A little bit of honey, a little bit of apricot. <laughs> That is where all this rye spice just came up on me. Man, it only comes up like halfway in power, but it's got a lot of layers. And boy, is it sticking around. I'm having a hard time. I don't know if you guys with the finish being more rye or barrel note spice on it. Because yeah. it's sticking around, yeah. dried out the top of my tongue. Sides of my tongue are salivating on this one. I, this is like you said, creamy. It's a creamy rye. Yeah, I think you're getting that tannic uh, barrel finish on the on the on the finish on the on the back end there. That's mm -hmm. to me is what I'm tasting is more of the barrel than the, the actual rye spice. Yeah, it's creamy. It's to me there's a honey note in there, uh, mm -hmm. kind of a dark honey. Um, and I get the the cognac kind of hits me on the sides of the mouth. Uh, there's a, a sour, sweet, almost like nerds candy kind of. Um, experience going on there a little hmm. bit of grape nerds <laughs> then the first half is the first half is so exciting because it's like so rich creamy dense i and i was getting like that lemon oil a little bit of apple mm -hmm. in there but then it's like poof clove spice little nutmeg cinnamon um yeah you I don't know about white pepper than black pepper. There's not like mm -hmm. 
cracking on your senses with anything. So maybe more of a white pepper in here. Yeah. Yeah, the way it hits my tongue, it's more like a white pepper. It is viscous. <clears throat> and it's just, for me, it's leather and cream. Mm-hmm. Is oh, what wow. comes along in the finish. It's oh, another wow. one of those whiskeys that comes in, and it's like it comes in as a solid and slowly starts to break. break yeah. Out. Yeah, it is, it's hard for you to see this, but it's like the inside of my glass kind of got slimed. Um, and it's just like taking a sweet time pulling down the, the sides of the glass because like I'm, you see legs develop on here, but they it's almost like they're not going anywhere. Like mm -hmm. it's just created a trail and it's, mm -hmm. it's just going to be there. Not banana bread, but like a molasses. And I don't want to call it a cookie because it was lighter than a cookie. Not as dense. It's a little bit of sugar. Jeez. Molasses drizzled over pound cake. I was just gonna say okay. sor sorghum on on warm bread. Yeah. Ah. Okay. Mm -hmm. it reminds me of down down in our our, our neck of the woods. Uh, have you guys ever heard of Lambert's Cafe? Home no. of throwed rolls, where they literally throw the rolls. They yell from. Oh, back I, up, I have heard about. That. Who wants hot rolls? And they just start whipping them across there, and they're just <laughs> big fluffy things. And then they come around with a bucket of, of sorghum and honey and everything else, and you put all over. Oh. That that third sip reminded me of those of those hot rolls with the sorghum on I it. think like we were talking, Ben, you've had a couple of the other finished rise from there, like the Sauter and Cask mm -hmm. and other stuff. Right. I think what you said is exactly right. What they're getting out of a two-year time frame is really impressive, and I find it more impressive yeah. because it is at we for 14 minutes. They're at the fucking tippy top of the 48 states. It's a, it's a bike ride to Canada. It's a yeah. bike ride to it's Canada. It's literally a bike ride to Canada. Yeah, but you can't you can't even get in or out there for poor guys. So it it is pretty amazing what they've done with yes. the, with the temperature and everything they have there. Um, the only thing we didn't ask them is what is it like a climate control warehouse and. Which I doubt it is, but I mean, with what they're getting I'm, is some. I'm, I'm impressed what they're doing with a 15 gallon barrel. Fucking ridiculous. I mean, just logically, yeah. it makes sense because you would think two years in a 15 gallon barrel, you're going to get a lot of oak impact, but you don't really. I don't feel like you taste a lot of that here. No. And if it's you know obviously just south of the border on Canada, a lot of the winter and the long winter it is, those barrels are going to be somewhat inactive. You know, because mm -hmm. you hit those cold temps and there's just not a lot of interaction going on. So maybe with using the small barrels to your time period, you're, they're getting just the right amount of interaction they want. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm just I'm sipping this and going, hey, Canada, take note. This is rye. <laughs> yeah. Damn good rye. Well, they, they, I mean, they, they keep their good ones. But yeah. he did he did say that they, they've been throwing down 53 gallons. Mm -hmm. yes, it's just none of, none of those are out yet. They've come to fruition. But I mean... And the other thing he said about that that I loved was that he was on that most people won't tell you is that he was taking different heads and tails cuts for the smaller barrel yeah, versus right. the 53. Is like they're different cuts, it's not like you're just mimicking what we did before. There's a difference in playing with a bigger barrel than with the small one, mm. and that's a pretty unique dance that I find I don't know if everyone could pull off, you know, like an extra no notebook worth of bullshit that you have to keep track of right. when, you're, when you're doing something like that and they're going in with the higher proof i think into the barrel too than what they might normally do with a larger barrel so that's uh you know I, when we were when i was started with the whole mini barrel projects that's one of the things i had read up on and learned was you know different different proofs going in the barrel extract different things from the wood and so with the smaller the barrels the higher the proof is actually better Mm -hmm. to in some ways limit some of the negative oak impact that you don't want to get so mm -hmm. um, but this is this is just brilliant for this age and yeah. just all the flavors and the the density and the layers and everything going on it's amazing you can get it your hands on rock gnar do it it has just a titch of like funk yeah you get like a little bit of funk like from some scotches where it's like just kind of pops up for a little bit and it's in there like it's not it's not a bad drunk doesn't put it off it like it plays very well with what's going on and i think it has to do with part of the rock. i think it would be really interesting i'm not i'm i'm not a hoarder <laughs> but um buy two bottles of this open one drink it share it with everybody save the other bottle 
for when the newer ones come out from the larger barrels yes. and do a comparison. Yeah, um, it'd be very intriguing. Especially because, you know, helps out the little guy right now who's been doing, he's been doing good work and making some hand sanitizer literally in the middle of nowhere. Uh, but also to see, because you, like, you, you get a rare opportunity to experience somebody's growth and seeing how, the, how they're changing. Um, and, and you're not going to get to do that with, with a lot of people, yeah. but this is, it's really good. <laughs> it's and, a wonderful experience. Nosing it alone, I think is, is worth a bottle. And, and there are what I like to call a hyper regional distillery where all the mm-hmm. grains come within about 20, 20 kilometers, 20 miles of their place. Yeah. Like it is, it's tight. Like you're not really going anywhere. What am I talking about? It's grown on site. It's grown on their farm. I think it was just yeah. the barley that wasn't like everything. The, grown. The, yeah, the malt. He goes, the, the malt, malt gets done somewhere else. Yeah, but everything else is grown on their farm. Yeah. So it's it's just out, you know, it's it's not far from where you're going to, to get all the stuff that's going on here. Man. So it's a really a nod to like super, if you see one, pick it up. I don't think you're yeah, going to be yes. upset. It's, it's a, a fun rye if you're a rye person. Yeah. Yes, definitely think it's. And if you're not a rye person, yes. If you it's do just not a, like rye for those reasons, this is a great rye for you. Yeah. Just remember, upcoming this Monday, coming up, we're going to be doing Ben. What's your? What was your idea that you have Mike and I doing? It was Sazerac poisoning. Um, we're doing a, a blind of. <laughs> I don't like your stream anymore, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> we got we got a little blind from Buffalo Trace. Uh, there's four uh, blind samples that I sent you guys. Uh, looking at the the mash bill with Buffalo Trace, E. H. Taylor, and Eagle Rare, and uh, letting you guys sample that and see mm-hmm. see if you can pick which one is which and what you like. And two of those are Buffalo Trace standard and a Buffalo Trace single barrel pick. So. And it is mm-hmm. bourbon month, I guess. We sh- we should, you know, it cater is. to a little of that, a little yeah. bit of that, show a little love to them. So we'll be doing that, and hopefully Ben and our Mike and I don't don't look like too big of an asses at the end of this tasting. But I think <laughs> we should be okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, so remember, it is not the size of the den that matters. It's the love of whiskey. Cheers, everyone out there. That's what Cheers. you said. Let's get into it. One, two, three. Let's get into it.